Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Send Them Off. Joined, as always, by Devin Reader. And not joined, as per the usual, by Tommy Kolkis. He, Inconsistent. Yeah. He made a short stint, uh, but has fallen out again. Fallen out of the squad. Yeah. Yeah. It feels a lot like the English national team. Um, anyways, let's move on from that. Speaking of England, we're going to start, as usual, with the Premier League. And probably the biggest game anywhere this weekend uh, was Chelsea beating Man U at home 1-0. Um, I'm honestly, personally, for me, that hurt. Um, but how damaging do you like to Man U's title race do you think that is? Like, How bad do you think it hurt the club and not supporters? In a word, catastrophic. <laughs> what a word. Uh, yes. I wanted to use another one, but I couldn't think of one better than catastrophic. So that's. I we mean, know you always try to use. I, I do try. I the do great try. words. It. Uh, I mean, there's. What, what can you say? You're eight points back, right? And there's a lot of the season left. But there's no indication. It doesn't. Man, it doesn't look man, like it's going to change. On Man U side or on Man City side, mm. that that's going to be subject to change over the course of the season, like that. Nothing's happened yet to make you go, I mean, it still seems possible. Even if United now wins each of the Manchester Derby games, which are still to play, they're still two points back. And, like, and when there are, yeah, yes. Yeah, and they, so they still need help. And before going into this, if they won and maintained the five point gap, then that is still possible. Like, yeah. all they have to do is beat City twice, and they're in front no matter, like, if, no matter uh, City's other results. Yeah. But now that. It's all in City's hands, really. I mean, it's, yeah. again, it's really early to say that. I don't think City is going to – Go unscathed. Yeah, go unscathed. I don't think – they're. I believe they're still unbeaten to this point. I don't think they're going beaten. I think they will lose. Yeah, Maybe I, to I, United. I believe they still the – uh, the only blemish on their record right now is a draw to <laughs> – I can't even remember. I know it was, it was like week three. It yeah, was, it was – they they got off to I don't want to say a slow start but like they weren't they didn't quite now, yeah yeah they didn't yeah. quite hit Which, they were in fourth gear as a, as opposed to like, like eighth mock, gear or like yeah. Mach one or yeah Mach one um, as far as United side of this um, I think they just looked horrible in my opinion in this game like they did not look up for how big of a game this was it looked yeah. like they were just like oh we'll go out there we'll pass the ball around let's have some fun lads. But like, but they weren't having any fun. Well, um, I mean, I know Chelsea is not, not – they're not Jose Mourinho's Chelsea, but they're still relatively defensive. Yeah. Um, and they just – Chelsea just shut them down, to be yeah. honest. They looked completely lackluster, slow and sluggish, no urgency from a team that needed to win. Well, and it's funny. I actually had a discussion with someone earlier today. Uh, over lunch about Manchester United, another one of my friends who's also a Manchester United fan, and I shout out know, to As Oscar. Yeah, shout out to Oscar. And we were discussing the, how impactful Pogba's presence or lack of, since he's been injured, has been. I mean, it was really the turning point. In and this. it was it was funny, you know. We made the mention of recently Lukaku and Mkhitaryan have vanished neither of them have been right any, i mean they're on the pitch <laughs> supposedly based supposedly on, yeah based on the uh the lineup sheet, the lineup but. <laughs> sheet but you can't actually find them impacting the game and you know it's it was funny i i said in a you know flashbacks to the swansea game that got ugly real quick i you know Pogba made a single goal. Mkhitaryan had an assist. He had five assists through the first three games. Hit one of his assists in and that game. And he still has five assists. One of the assists in that game was Pogba carried it through the midfield, mm -hmm. passed it to Mkhitaryan, continued his run. Mkhitaryan played him in behind, and he chipped the goalkeeper. Right? Good Pogba old, made good the old Pogs. Yeah, he made the entire goal, but Mkhitaryan got an assist. And everyone was at that point was just talking about look at the like look at the impact Mkhitaryan's having right and 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 so and you could say that a lot about Lukaku's goals you you look I mean, Lukaku at the beginning still... of the year and Paul Pogba looked like he was worth somewhat worth that price tag it's definitely in that's, this, a, that's a def price tag for several years yeah though. De yeah but definitely like he was finally performing at what they yeah. thought he should have been last year and he was world class. He was beating people one on one. He was willing to dribble upfield. He's willing to make runs. He was able to give the ball to other skilled players in space. 
by being such a threat he himself. Was, he was he was using his time on the ball and without the ball effectively, which was yes. the key. He he was pretty good. Like watching him last year, he was good on the ball. Like there's no doubting that that man's uh, pure class, really. Yeah. On the ball, but last year he just kind of chilled when he wasn't yeah. on the ball. But this year he seems to be impacting things. Like you said, mm-hmm. he continued his run, got that goal. Um, but without without Pogba, it, it's been. It's definitely been harder. I don't want to say, it's, you know, oh, we lost Pogba. That's the yeah. reason. Because it's not. Lukaku and Mkhitaryan, it's as you said, have yeah. slowed down. The entire team as a whole has looked bad. Also, we've had injuries in the defense, which right. does not help when you're missing your midfielder, uh, your key midfielder. Uh, that said, Pogba today, actually, back training with the reserves, not with the first team. But yeah. still, he's doing things now. Yeah. But it's just it's just something to note, like, since he went out, you've – you saw a decline due to other injuries, but I mean, it really did disrupt the, the it sort was of tempo. The and, biggest impact. Yeah, it really disrupted the tempo and kind of what they had established in the beginning games. And I mean, at this point, that their he, their hope, Man U's hope to get back in the title race is Paul Pogba comes back like he left. If, better. Yeah. We need him to be better than that if, at this point. Uh, and I don't know if that's even like. I, of course, we always say people like they can't get better, but he really was playing amazingly yeah, well. Yeah, he was. He was. Playing I mean, fantastic. fantastic. And I'm, you know, the first. I'm probably the last person to say this person can't do better than this because mm. there's always something to improve yeah. on. But he was phenomenal. So it'll be really interesting to see in the coming weeks when he returns to the squad whether that makes a big difference on their uh, offensive output at least. Yeah, I think. I mean, we we talk about Lukaku and Mkhitaryan slowdown as we said the. They're through 11 games, 11, 12 games uh, through the season, and Lukaku has seven goals, like seven goals in 11 games. I know he has seven goals in 11 games. I don't know if he's played every game, mm-hmm. but um, that's that's still a good return. Like yeah. that's still that's still a good, like very good return. We can't complain, really complain about that. It's just the fact that he had like seven goals in the first six games, and like mm-hmm. they, they got off to such a hot start. Yeah. Mkhitaryan. He still has those five assists, and again, five assists in 11 games is, is good. But when but there was five in the first, first three, three, when now yes. he's played eight games without an assist, it, it, it struggles. And I think Pog, the lack of having Pogba is an effect on that because we have Ander Herrera and Matic to play off to, and they're good, but they're better. Defensive. It, diff, yeah, different ways. They're, they're more physical defensive players than a Pogba who can – he can be defensive, but that's not his strong suit. Mm-hmm. But, like, he's so much better going forward, and he's a lot more creative. Yes, yeah. Now, moving to a game involving City, the, the other Manchester team, but uh, that's not really the, not yeah. really the talking point of a City. Uh, 3-1 over Arsenal. Um, not we, – we like to rag on Arsenal here. Not, not, a, not, not a, a terrible display showing. by yeah, Arsenal. No, no. But the biggest talking point out of this game was Lacazette did not start. Yeah. The the star man now, basically, because Alexi Sanchez hasn't done a damn thing this year. Um, he has as many goals as Kolasinac. Um, hey, don't hate on my man Kolasinac. No, no, a great player, but he's also a left back. Yeah. <laughs> That's his point. Um, yeah, like I said, the star man, the first major signing in some years by Arsene Wenger, mm-hmm. and that's been one of the biggest cont- like contenders points from Arsenal fans of, hey, this man is stingy, like he will not spend money. He finally splashed the cash on like I said, and he's not starting him in a big game. And when he comes on, he gets a goal. And, so, and when he comes on, he you know, gets the, that one goal. And it was it – was, it, was a it was a kind of a quick hitting like counter. There was a few players running at the back line, but Lacazette finished it off. Like it was not a, a well fashioned chance. This was him showing his ability, his class, right. in getting this goal. So you kind of wonder why would didn't why he start? why yeah question. when when you have a player that can give you that moment of inspiration or or uh, ability, just their their pure. Uh, you know, technical skill, ability on the ball can can kind of find you a goal out of nothing. Essentially, why do you not keep them on the field as long as possible? And and, and I think, as far as we know, there were no uh, injuries. Yeah, there, I don't yeah, think he was no had a knock or anything like stipulations that. Stipulations yeah. to his fitness. There was nothing like go, going on about that. So it, this was purely he just didn't. Arsene Wenger didn't start Lacazette for one reason or another tactically. Uh, he didn't feel it was the best way to approach. I don't know what he was thinking. Who knows what Arsene Wenger's um, ever thinking? Let's be honest. You know, but I, it's it's hopefully you know that you'll start to see Lacazette play more. I feel like he's an exciting player to watch. I think this is 
Yeah. One of, if not the only time this year, he's not started. Yeah. And I think there was at least another game, but that, mm-hmm. I think he had a slight knock or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, we're talking about Lacazette. I, I talked before about Lukaku's seven goals in eleven games. Um, Lacazette's got six goals in, yeah. in the same eleven games. So clearly, he should be the man out there. He's got. Uh, double the amount of the next closest Arsenal player, who's uh, which is actually tied between Aaron Ramsey, oh, yes. your boy, uh, and Danny Welbeck. Yeah, well, good old Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck had that amazing start to the season, but and then uh, like realized he was Danny Welbeck and stopped. That's we need to stop <laughs> insulting these players. We need to appreciate Danny Welbeck more. I mean, I've got my own personal problems against Danny Welbeck. The fact okay. that he couldn't do it wearing red in Manchester, but that's not his point. Um, yeah, so I don't really understand the decision to not start Lacazette, mm-hmm. especially in a big game. Although I do see the value of possibly having him as a sub against, you know, a Brighton, against teams like that. Maybe you want to give, not just necessarily give somebody else, give a different player a chance, but maybe you want to have Lacazette come in as an X factor. Flash when other yeah. people are tired. But yeah. not in a big uh, game yeah. because you're going to end up being behind, behind yeah. against Man City. And they were at the time, and you made yeah. it 2-1. And... You know, we talked about this not being a terrible showing by Arsenal. That third goal, questionably, I would argue offside for uh, Man City. Uh, definitely, definitely fringing on possible. Definitely close. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's that's an unlucky break. Maybe that third one doesn't go in. Do they find another? You know, right, do they yeah. take points off? You always have those sort of questions. Uh, but again, Man City in a game against another top squad, Getting got the results result. again. You yeah. got a result. Whether or not you argue the potentials of if this hadn't happened or this happened, yeah. they got the result. They, where they still got the result. Previous years, that doesn't occur. Regardless of, they're on the other end of the argument where you're like, if the, they hadn't called that goal yeah. offside when it really wasn't offside. Maybe City's in yeah. this title race. And now yeah. City is front, like they're controlling the race. Yeah. Um, now we're, we're going to move to the other end of the table. Uh, West Ham. Poor West Ham. This was, there was a single goal in this Liverpool West Ham game that just, <laughs> I don't know who the center back was for West Ham. By, by the way, I will say uh, one, uh, one four four one, however you want to call yeah. it. Liverpool beat them over the weekend. Uh, I think what was it? Declan Rice is who you're talking about. I don't know. I just know that it was the quickest like counter with some of the <laughs> quickest players in the world probably running, but two of them in yeah. Mohamed Salah and. Sadio Mane running at this poor center back, <laughs> all isolated at the halfway line. Like, that just was completely unfair to him. And that's, I mean, that's the summation of yeah. what West Ham has been. And as a result, Slavin Bilic has been sacked. Um, I, I want to say uh, it's like a, I don't want to say disappointing as far as, um, like, results are obviously yeah. there. West Ham fans have been, uh, like, really open and, like, uh, accepting of him and like yeah. being really willing to patient is the word I've been looking for this entire time. Patient. Yeah, they've been really like willing to get let him try to work it out, but I feel like it's just that time they, yeah. the results aren't there. The fact that they're every game you've come in, they've played in the season, or especially every game they've lost, you look at you can now look at like a particular moment, mm-hmm. but more consistently is the fact that. Almost always, it's a defensive breakdown yeah. or a slip up. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's not them just being outclassed in any way, which is which is the thing. Like if you're gonna lose to Man U, you're gonna lose to the Cities, the Chelseas. It it's one thing if you're just outplayed, like yeah. if you are beaten by a better team. But I watched like them play several times. I mean, the opening game against uh, Man U was similar to the Swansea thing where it was. Relatively close, and then Man U, you know, piled yeah. on, countered, countered, countered. But the defensive performance was abysmal. As soon yeah. as, like, you know that they're going to try to counter you, and they're just not putting anyone back. Like, hey, you're trying yeah. to win the game, but you're trying to get and points back. But you, wow. And you wonder with a manager such as uh, Slavin Bilic, like, that's – you find it hard to believe that he wouldn't have accounted for mm-hmm. that. That seems like a, a player issue, a – well, I mean, Club as, as far as, far issue, as the like, you know, yeah, as far as the player issues, there's been no like indications that he like lost the locker room. There's right. not, there's no Dimitri Payet situation going on right. with the entire locker room. It's just more. I don't feel uh, like any of these players really are performing to their abilities, yeah. and, and it just always, seems they looked like United did against Chelsea. They look 
kind of out of it. Yeah. And, I mean, West Ham also, just like last year, have been hit with an onslaught of injuries. As, as That's just West Ham. Though. Yeah. And, you know, beginning of the year, you're missing your talisman in Lin, uh, Manuel Lanzini and stuff like that. And you get him back. But then I think Ogbonna went out. Some of their central, like, defensive the midfielders. The tank that is yeah, Ogbonna. You know, and stuff like that. And it's just... I feel I feel bad like reading this because you look at Slavin Vilic and I mean we're gonna get to this in a minute but I mean he deserves to be managing a club yeah. somewhere for sure. He's uh, he definitely I I, I want to say he kind of like especially when he first got there he kind of embodied West Ham like it was it felt perfect like yeah. he is he's not. You know, like the other managers that, like some, some, not all, yeah. some other managers, you know, they kind of have that arrogance, you know, yeah. the Jose Mourinho's, you know, the, the little, like the Pep Guardiola's, <laughs> the, the ones that are at the big clubs, you know, yeah. um, they're a little arrogant. They seem, you know, not like a man of the people. Slavin Bilic, that man felt like he, d- like, belonged yeah. with West Ham because West Ham is like an industrious club. And they're the hammers yeah. the, and the yeah. hammers and the irons for a reason. Um, I mean, and he came in with good, like, success right away. He had, Seventh place yeah. with West Ham ended up in a Europa League spot through some technical. I think it was the uh, the free spot that was given away to uh, whatever club had like the whatever league had the best sportsmanship or yeah. something like that. They did that weird thing that weird year. Uh, he ended, they got knocked out in the qualifying before the group stage though. Um, but then eleventh last year, which is not great. Yeah, but, but it's not. Terrible. It was all right, and they had horrible injuries yeah. last year. Yeah, but. Now they're sitting, and I want to say it's 17th, yeah. 18th. That's yeah. not looking good. There's clearly needs to be a change here. There hasn't been progress made. Um, like, and he got at least the one of the two major players he wanted because he he really wanted Arnautovic and Carvalho. He got Arnautovic. Still didn't get Carvalho, and I feel like Carvalho would have really helped them here. Yeah. because uh, like he is a good rock, mm-hmm. you know, at the back of the midfield, but. Still, like, you got yeah. the man you asked for and you're not getting results. It's understandable. Yeah. It's not understandable, to me at least, is why they're bringing in David Moyes. That's the man who's been chosen to replace him. Mr. Just got relegated uh, with Sunderland and brought United to seventh as the uh, chosen man after Alex Ferguson. Uh, how, do, how, do, how do you feel about that? I feel like you're pickup? much uh, much better fit to speak on your opinions on this matter on, on than, David I, Moyes. than I am. He was, obviously you're very passionate. Or, or I, I'm not, I don't want to say very. I just you I feel have like strong you have um, on why. you are current. You're currently you don't want to be, but you're currently in a relegation battle. Right. Why do you want to hire somebody who just got relegated with a team that was worse, but given the injuries you have, kind of equatable to the team yeah. you have now? Why do you want to bring in somebody who? Just got relegated, and and on top of that, he was like he was fantastic Sunderland. at Everton like five years ago. He yeah. got them to like fourth, their best ever finish. That was like an 04 though. But like, yeah, he was fantastic with Everton. But since then, he has not shown anything. Cause I'm pretty well, sure he was at uh, Sociedad for a little while too, and they didn't do much either. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know enough to say whether this is the right move. They should have gotten Big Sam. No, no. That's, no, no, he needs to you, go to Everton. You will, you will stay up if you get Big Sam. <laughs> well, that's what they need, at least yeah. at the moment. They need to guarantee safety. Um, but, you know, d- does the players at his disposal, do they fit David Moyes' system, his style of play? I mean, that's something we're going to have to see. Yeah, because David Moyes, I will give him credit, He is he's pretty good at trying to uh, adapt a little bit. Mm-hmm. But he's still he's, he doesn't, like, let the players run. Mm-hmm. The thing he doesn't be like, okay, so we have these players. This is the system we're going to run because we have those players. But at the same time, he's not like, I must be in the system. He has a little bit of wiggle room, so we'll see what he can do. The uh, potential I, I is think, there for West Ham. I still think it's a good – I think as sad it is to see Slavin Village go, this yeah. is a – this needed to happen. Yes, unfortunately. This, this Unfortunately, this needed to happen, and this seems like it could – go well and I mean that's that's the best thing you want is that optimism you kind of want to look at it and go this could work and I think it I think it will I honestly like you know we talked about this before like why is West Ham even in this relegation argument like what right. same thing with Everton um, but there's a real quick on the West Ham or you know Slavin Village has you know departed from West Ham who should get him and I argue Everton you argue Everton? I argue Everton just simply because... Well, I have an, inter- I was say, I have an interesting yeah. thing to say about Slavin Village yeah. on this situation, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Everton know. do I, need a manager, yeah. but... 
And I mean, is I he like, the guy right now? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like Bill. What's should Roberto go Martinez up to? Bring him back. Yeah. Actually, what he's up to is being the manager for Belgium. So. Yeah. You know, take what you can get, Roberto. I mean, geez. Um, they're doing well. Yeah. Uh, he. Uh, for me, I, he needs to wait a little bit. He should not go back into another job right now. That's okay. that's what I'm gonna say because they have been. I don't want to say attacking him, but. There has been speculation about his job since last season. Yeah. He has been under an immense amount of pressure and For like stress. a solid year. For, yeah, about a solid year. He needs to take a mind off that might help him, take his mind off, go, okay, this is what I did wrong. This is what I did right. This is what should have been better. Maybe maybe at some points you have to you look, you look at what happened. You go, okay, maybe that was something that was out of my control. Mm-hmm. He, take it back. Then I think he needs to look – outside England yeah once okay. once maybe at the end of the season maybe in the middle of the season because he came to West Ham from Besiktas I believe and he was doing really well there mm-hmm. and maybe you don't want to go quite e- as Eastern European you want to stay in maybe yeah. a big week in, in a big five week but I, I think maybe not coming straight back to the Premier League might be good at the same time, he'll have a better knowledge of Premier League players mm-hmm. now, so that might help. Uh, but I don't think necessarily – I don't think Everton is the right fit for him right. in terms of club, like, strategy and club culture. Uh, oh, no, I just want to see culture. it, honestly. You just want to yeah. see Slavin yeah. Bilic get the job. Yeah. yeah. I, want, I'm a, I want to see him get a job, but I think he, need, he needs to wait a bit. I think that would be best for him. I, I can concede that. That's a fair, fair assessment. All right, moving to the Bundesliga, which, which has is, sadly become very lopsided. Which has become boring again. <laughs> Since the last time we discussed it, or last show that got... Yeah, our last show, <laughs> we, uh, we did film a show last week, but uh, the upload didn't work. We had technical difficulties, so unfortunately, we the took a week off. The last time we mentioned the Bundesliga, it was yeah. very entertaining. Now it has become decidedly less so. Because, unfortunately, Bayern is at the top again. Yeah, Bayern just beat uh, Dortmund away 3-1. Dortmund has now lost two straight after losing 4-2 to Hanover. After they did get a red card, there was that. But still, and that red card was really clumsy, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, What's your take on Dortmund's situation? Do you still see them even having a chance in the title race? Do you think they're just bad run of form or bigger issues? I mean, it it is – this has been a – Already disappointing season, I think, for Dortmund. Uh, we look at the Champions League. They were in a group with Tottenham, Real Madrid, and... Applewell. Applewell. And Why do I know that? <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, I should know that. Mm. We've discussed it enough. We've, yeah. Um, it's the number one group. But, you know, we looked at that at the beginning of the year, and we went, oh, Tottenham hasn't had any European success. They're obviously not going to get... They're probably least likely of the top three teams in that we're group. We're thinking to Tottenham's going to win the Europa League. Yeah, or something, <laughs> and now they're at the top of it. And yeah. Dortmund has two points, right? Two draws to Applewell? Yeah, two draws to Applewell. They haven't even beaten Applewell, which, um, I mean, credit to Applewell. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not – if you're Borussia Dortmund, like, that is not – that is not the standard you yeah. want to set for yourself. And – I'd also like to point out uh, something that just I just now remembered. Mm-hmm. Their next uh, matchup in the, the Pokal, the, the German Cup, is Bayern. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so um, that could either be really good for them if they beat Bayern, they might spur, you know, a yeah. uh, huh, spur. revival. Um, yeah, revival in the league, a renaissance a, a push. But if they, that's just gonna kill them if they lose to Bayern in that too. Yeah, and I mean, I think you look at that and we go, okay, so they're not really in the Champions League. I mean, they've been all but mathematically <laughs> What's eliminated. What's left for them? What's left for them? Bundesliga. But the Bundesliga. And so maybe, maybe if they can focus on that, they can figure some of the problems out. But they, they just have not been. As as dominant as they were, you know, especially two three years two ago. three yeah. years ago. But even last year, that was kind of a meh year for them. They still were much performing well, I mean, much better than. What was it? I, I feel like a big factor, not not a huge factor, not quite Pogba to United yeah. level, but the fact that Royce has been pretty much almost injured entirely for like two years. Yeah. Like he is, yeah. I, I, he's probably played like a total of sixteen games over the past two seasons. Like, and you and you have to wonder what that does to the player of voices as well right, that's yeah. not even a he's not in the team that's a he does come back when he, when he plays injured. who who is he anymore yeah you know it is very difficult for a player i think to constantly come back from injury and so that's uh, you you know you feel for marco royce on stuff like that but um yeah this is i don't know this is this is 
sadly turned the Bundesliga, which was looking very interesting, into something that is somewhat predictable. Now, uh, for, for me, for Dortmund, uh, I went back. I watched the highlights. I didn't get to yeah. see the, the full games, but usually we're watching Premier League instead, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. Um, Dortmund's... It's televised. Yeah, Dortmund's... Well, Dortmund's on uh, FS1 now, but anyways. Well, not Dortmund. All the Bundesliga. But Dortmund's defending has looked really poor yeah. in the past few games. Like, not just... They they were two one up to Hanover before the red card and the red card was just absolutely horrible defending. The center back the guy was through on goal. It's three on one as far as three defenders to one uh, one attacker. Although the attacker is passed um, and heading through on goal and the defender just clatters him. It wasn't even like a tackle. He just like ran right into the back of him. It was the most clumsy thing I think I've ever seen. Uh, and red card and scored from the from the free kick. Following, oh, wow. um, and Hanover just pat like right through the box. Yeah. Like Dortmund's defense has looked really poor in the Champions League as well. Yeah. Not just Berkey's near post; he actually made a really good save that kept them from being two-two before the red card. Um, but yeah, their defense is like horrible in the the game against Bayern. Bayern got two 0 up, and then basically looked like they were coasting. Yeah. And then they still had two or three more chances, one leading to a goal. Uh, I'll say the first goal Byron scored was the traditional Robin Curler on his left foot. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. But their their lone goal came didn't come for Dortmund, didn't come until the 80th minute, and it was Spartra. Like, that should not happen. Your your yeah. attack against Bayern Munich should not be your center back who can then not, clearly not get back. Yeah. Okay, so on the flip side of this, Dortmund kind of taken a few steps back. They're third in the table. Leipzig is second, and I think a point back of Bayern. Or is it? Is it? They're they're four, I believe. They're four back. Yeah, and it's, then it's, is it's five twenty six. I think it's twenty six points, twenty two and twenty. Yeah. So Leipzig is is I mean still two games back if we're using yeah. common like American conventions for yeah. playoff runs. Uh, you know they're two games back. A little a little bit of uh, outside it, it's, soccer it, it, knowledge. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, but. I would definitely like to say that uh, Leipzig is probably a better contender to Bayern at the moment. I would still say they're a better contender, but it's not a very strong contention. You, you think this has become boring? Bayern's going to basically not ever lose the lead it, in the, the table from here on out? They're the really, I mean, honestly. It's become, it's, it's their it's man gonna, city now? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn, this entire situation is going to turn into what happens over the holidays. True. When we have those run of games that happen real quick, you know, players are tired. Do the big teams drop points? Who gets through well, that? I mean, that said, the Bundesliga does take a winter break. Uh, but they do put they do play a, like I, I want to say they usually end up playing like six games in four weeks when they come back. That's what and that's yeah, what I'm saying. So, it's just like stuff that results from that. It'll be interesting to see. And also, usually the part of the reason for the winter break is not just what celebrate Christmas, but uh, the fact that it allows pretty much most of the January transfer window to happen without the players like be Still having like to play yeah games. having to play. So we can also see what happens during that. Dortmund might, you know, pick up somebody. Although in the last few years it's been a little disappointing, at least the January transfer window. We've we've failed to see like big clubs make any big mm -hmm. moves during the January uh, window the past few years. But I think that's what so, something I should change. Ban. Does it get lifted this coming winter? I believe it's the winter, yes. So okay. I believe that, Diego Costa just, will be there yeah, in the winter. Just, uh, I, I wanted to make sure about that, but that'll be something yeah. really interesting. If Atletico's ban gets lifted, do, does Griezmann leave Atletico? That's obviously mm. a big deal. Who do they bring in now that they had their ban yeah. lifted? So maybe that'll kind of spur some of this uh, winter transactions. Oh, real quick rundown in the Italian league. We didn't really cover it. Napoli is still in first, but unfortunately Juventus has made a recovery and is and now one, one point, point behind. Great. Uh, Guys, Inter, boring Inter, again. Inter Milan still has not lost. They are, Neither is I, Napoli. Just yeah. That out, yeah. So I think Napoli is at 32 32 points. and 31 and 30. And, yeah, 31, yeah. 30. And then even Roma, who's in fifth, I think is at 27 points. So it's all pretty tight in the Italian table. So it's, it's it, it interesting. Could, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's saddening and yeah. <laughs> that Juventus has come back up, at least for the uh, – uh, perspective of we, we want to see a change. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing with the Bundesliga. It's been Byron for so long. Uh, winning, uh, the Juventus have won the Scudetto yeah. so many times now. Uh, that, But it, there's still a lot of yeah. like action that could happen there. And if Juventus slips up like they have in the uh, beginning of the season, 
they could very well lose that streak. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it remains to be seen. There weren't any big fixtures this upcoming week, so we neglected to cover the Italian league. Uh, yeah, and international, as I say, an international break this weekend. Yeah. So. Uh, so here we go with the international stuff. World Cup playoffs. World Cup playoffs are here. This international break, we will find out the remaining nine teams, I believe it is, um, that get into the World Cup. Yeah, the, there's four. There's four from Europe yeah. left. The two there's, intercontinentals and, and the three from Africa. Africa. Yeah, yep. I was just you know using our <laughs> double checking my math. Yep, I don't blame you. My math is not good. Uh, but as far as the European playoffs are considered, uh, the matchups. Uh, we got were Sweden, Italy, which That's we we really talked about nice. would would have been the best matchup. Yeah, um, um, interesting. But I'll I'll run through them first of it. We can talk to them. Yeah. Uh, Greece versus Croatia, which uh, first leg just ended about an hour ago. Uh, Croatia won four one. That's really tough for Greece well, now. Yeah, we will we will discuss that. Yeah, uh, Northern Ireland versus Switzerland. Switzerland took the uh, first leg on the road one nil, mm-hmm. uh, and then Denmark Republic of Ireland, which that that first leg is until tomorrow. Same with Italy, but. Mm-hmm. Discuss. <laughs> Discuss. Oh, we're not. We're gonna move on. Uh, we're gonna do the inter. Oh, we're gonna do all of our ones. Next. All right. Okay. I, okay, okay. Uh, I was gonna do Europe first. Okay, we can do Europe first. We're a little bit disorganized, guys. Uh, so, all right. So, first of all, I want to talk about the Greece Croatia because we already have a result. For yeah. Them. Um, what a nightmare for Greece. Well, it was this in. Where was this? This at? was, I believe, in Croatia. Okay. But still, Greece again. Like Dortmund, their defending looked absolutely shambolic. Yeah, um, I, I, w- I was watching. I, <laughs> I was watching the game in class, no two decades, um, and I just absolute just like masterclass as far as from Croatia. The first goal was a penalty, um, so that was you know yeah th- those happen. You can't really necessarily go. Oh, that was bad defense. I mean, it is a mistake. It's a if someone yeah. makes a bad tackle. Yeah, a penalty goes in. Yeah, end of story. And it was Modric. Yeah, because of course it was. Um, but then, uh, they went two 0 up on a ve- um on a pretty run of the mill goal. Mm-hmm. It, it was very much for like half of the goals in the Premier League are just passed downfield, a couple passes in the box, slotted in, uh, which again it was poor defending because mm-hmm. those are the goals that you should not allow. The spectacular yeah. goals are fine. The penalties. Free kicks. They, they happen, um, but those, those are the goals. Direct free that, kicks, yeah. sorry. Um, Set the, pieces you try not to concede. Yeah, th- those are the goals that should not happen are the ones that are the easiest way to score. Yeah. Um, but then a beautiful th- uh, third goal for Croatia. Greece got a goal in there in the middle, and that they looked kind of like a fluke. It was their only shot on target, at least in oh, the wow. first half. Um and then, yeah, Croatia's third goal, beautiful cross, perfect header. Fourth goal was just one of those the game kind of got out of hand for Greece and they capitalized. I mean, I guess the main takeaway, though, is, is where does this leave Greece? What what result would they have to get in the second leg? I assume the same away Three goal. Yeah. I believe that the away goal, away goal is still applying. Yeah, because so, I think that's how uh, Portugal beat Sweden last year. Yeah, so Greece – Or not last World Cup, sorry. Uh, I mean, three 0 against Croatia, not likely not, to happen. Not likely. So, as far as as we're concerned, although our predictions are often wrong, yeah. Croatia is probably one of the nine teams going through. Yeah. Sweden, Italy. Sweden, Italy. I, I have absolutely no idea. I think this will be one decided on away goals or extra time. Uh, I yeah. Sweden has been actually technically their like last five game form is not great. I've got my underrated appreciated slash whatever <laughs> player. I figured cool. it out. Spoiler for later. Um, but Sweden has not been playing uh, great in, like, the immediate mm-hmm. past. But overall, throughout its qualifying, they've been playing well above expectations. They've been playing really well. They're kind of, you would say they're the hot team. Italy, below expectations. Now, granted, Spain was also in that group, so that, that was a hard group. Either Spain or Italy was going to probably end up going to a playoff. Mm-hmm. Um, but Italy's a better team, let's yes, be honest. Yes. Italy's better. Buffon is still Buffon. So. Respect. <laughs> So the goals are going to be at a premium for Sweden, regardless of what happens, just based yeah. on the, the quality of the defenders for uh, Italy with, you know, Chiellini, Barzagli, the Bonucci. That's the main one. I've yeah. listed them third, but, and uh, Buffon. But Sweden has been really hot, so I think this will be a really entertaining two legs, but I think, I think it's going to be real close. I've given the edge to Italy for Same. experience. Yeah, I, I, I think, and as much as I want to see Sweden, like, mm. I think Italy – Italy Sweden probably makes the goes, World Cups. A lot of times should just be added to the roster. Just goes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Italy probably goes through on this one. 
probably. Uh, either one goal or, or extra time penalties, something like that. I think Italy is just – I think their class is just way too much and the experience that they have, especially with their – I mean, their leader, Grandpa Buffon. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard for, for Sweden to, you know, deal with that. Like, they're a pretty young team because yeah. the, the team that played with Zlatan uh, in the last World Cup qualifying um, phase – Pretty much, I want to say at least six of those starters are gone. Yeah. And it, it's a new generation of Swedes. Um, and clearly they've done, they've done really well, so that's uh, great. Uh, to the other game uh, that we have a result for, Northern Ireland versus Switzerland. 1-0 to Switzerland on the road. I think that's fair. I yeah. think Switzerland is probably heavily favored in this. Yeah. They're Northern Ireland, they've done really well to this point, but it's where, Switzerland who's their is a danger good team. men? Yeah, like, yeah. Swi- where's where's yeah. their X factor? Where yeah. is their Switzerland? You got yeah, Jaka popping up every once in a while with a long ranger, and then Shakiri being friggin' Shakiri. Yeah, and probably he probably scored the goal. I didn't check, but I'm gonna presume it was Shakiri. <laughs> well, or like Mbolo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Switzerland's just got too much quality. I think Northern Ireland clearly they held them one nil, but that was also at home for Northern Ireland. Yeah, so now they have to go away. Yeah. They have to get a goal. They can't give up a goal. Yeah, you know they got to get a goal. They just can win. Extra they can time, win. So. They can win two one, which I think is if they're gonna do this. Yeah, that's how it's gonna happen. That's they're how they, they they're gonna win two one. Because you think if it goes extra time, it's gonna favor the team with better quality. Yeah. They've got to win two one in regulation. That's that's my call on this the next <laughs> fixture of that. I I don't I think I think it will be two one, but I think Switzerland's gonna win that like two one. Okay, I mean I'm just I saying like be I think Switzerland wins this entire thing. I think mm-hmm. they advance, but if Northern Ireland is going to pull it out, that's how they have to. That's that's right, the yeah. conditions that have to be met there. Um, all right, so I I like I like this matchup too. I really like all the matchups that we ended yeah, up. Yeah, we. Uh, Fairly good. Greece, Croatia was not as good as anticipated. Yeah, <laughs> but Denmark and the Republic of Ireland. I, I'm going to go a, a lot with the the Switzerland Northern Ireland matchup here. I think Denmark, uh, who by the way have won four of their last five games, they are and, on absolute fire. The, the only Christian game Eriksson, I think, yeah. has scored a goal and yeah, like or assisted all of them. in like the last. I think yeah. I saw a stat something like six straight games for his yeah. country. I mean, uh, the I think I'm going to go with the Fighting Ericsons. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Denmark. I think. They've got too good a form and too good quality, yeah. I think, for Ireland. Ireland, that said, is a, is a pretty good team. But when you look at the fact that, like, their captain is David Myler, and I love that, man. Like, shout out to David Myler for running a full-time FIFA channel on YouTube he, yeah, and also being a professional football YouTube player. Yeah. Or wherever. Um, but, yeah, yeah it's, sadly, that's not really the level of quality. Now, granted, he's not the best player in the team, but he is the captain. He's the leader. And he's only been captain for, like, oh, uh, I want to say half of this venture. Like, he's only been captain for uh, two or three games. So, yeah, so we don't have the leadership any, is We there. have no results for this, right? No, yeah, no, that game uh, hasn't happened yet. 4 2 Denmark, total aggregate. Total aggregate? Somehow. That's fair. I was, I was going to go with a. Uh, a 2 1. I think it's going to be a little. Uh, Low score? Goal desperate. It might. It might. I can see that. Some we're we're so we're both on Denmark. De- yeah, Denmark. Somewhere between four goals and two goals for Denmark, <laughs> and somewhere two or one for Republic of Ireland. Okay. It's the I mean it's the same like basic score line. Just yours is multiplied by two. Hey, I think I like <laughs> I like goals. Don't on, we all? On to the Inter Confederation playoffs. Yeah. Honduras will play Australia, and New sorry, Zealand, Honduras. Yeah. <laughs> and New Zealand will play Peru. I just want to start by saying clap for Peru. That's, yes, yeah, good, yeah, good job, like, Peru. <laughs> I want to. I want Peru to advance so bad. I mean, just it, because they should have been they, through. They should have yeah. been through. They shouldn't even be in this situation. But if you go back and watch the football that they played, yeah. the way that they set themselves up to have a chance in the South American like qualifying, amazing. I mean, it was amazing. That was they were not a team. You looked at that. You looked at the team that didn't make it, and the big one other than the U.S. not making the World yeah. Cup. It, it was. Chile, like, Chile. yeah, Chile did yeah. not advance into the World Cup after winning the was it? I forget the Copa America. Yeah, okay. I wanted to make sure I couldn't didn't want to say the U.S. Yeah. one. I, the yeah, Gold the Cup. Gold, the Gold Cup. That's it. What a bad name. Sorry, but uh, you know, <laughs> Copa de Oro. <laughs> but uh, this is. I definitely. I mean, I think Peru's a better team, but I also personally want to see them get through just because I, of I the think, way what they did before. Well, this. I think. Th- as long as they carry that over, they should have no problems with this. I think, yeah. again, this could get ugly. Like, sorry, New Zealand, but 
you play pretty trash opponents. New Zealand will always come out of Oceania, barring something disastrous now that Australia has moved to the Asian Confederation. Um, but I think Peru is going to be way too good. Clearly they showed it in South American qualifying. Um, I think they'll be way too good. I think Australia is going to be way too good for Honduras as well. Now, I, that said, I think that is not – like I think Peru is almost a guarantee, uh, and I know that's a dangerous thing to say. But I don't think Australia – Honduras is because Honduras, I mean, they've shown playing us, playing Mexico, playing Costa Rica, that they can do things. And they made the World Cup last time out. Yeah. Um, but I think Australia should be way too good for them. But who knows? That one, I think, will be surprisingly close. It'll be really interesting next week when we get to come back and talk about yeah, all the results. Yeah, next, next weekend, we could, uh, next week, we could do a better uh, analysis <laughs> and not have to go play guesswork all the time. Oh, and then, of course, the Af African groups. So, so far in the African groups, the two that I have, and I did check the math on this. Oh, you did check yeah, my math. Okay, good. I checked Egypt and Nigeria are through simply yep. because there's one game left and they're winning by more than three yep. points. So Simple math, though. Yeah, simple math, but <laughs> they are through. Um, and so right now, there is the two teams. I want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. The two teams that are fighting in one group are – uh, Tunisia, Tunisia, Tunisia. Sorry, and I, the Demo I, Democratic I knew, People's Republic. Of I knew I was saying it wrong. I don't know why. It's like when you try to say a word yeah. and you just can't. For some and you're reason. like, I know what it is, but I'm gonna try something else because I think what I <laughs> know is wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and that what is that? That's DR a Congo. No, no, no. That's a separation oh, of three points. Three points. Yeah. So, so Con Congo's Congo got to win their win. game. I didn't, I'm going to be honest to say, I did not do the research of checking who each team plays because there's a lot here, and that would have taken way too much time, and it would take a long, way too much time for me to list it all. Uh, but, sorry, Tunisia? Tunisia, it's going to be, they, they need a point, so. They, yeah, they, if they That'd be do anything other than lose, they're through, and if, and then even if they do lose, lose yeah. uh, you know. Congo's got to win. Congo's got to win, but we saw crazier things happen with the well, U.S. Congo qualification. Congo DR, going to be. Yes, specific. the Democratic people. Republic of the people. Yeah, I think it's just Democratic Republic, but anyways. Uh, and then uh, Group C of that, because Nigeria is in their Group B, uh, Morocco and Ivory Coast separated by one point. That's interesting. That That's very interesting. Ivory Coast kind of disappointing that they're not already in first. That said, Morocco is a solid team. Morocco is a solid team. So when it comes to the African groups, it's usually you get one other solid team or you get absolutely nothing. Like the fact that, honestly, Tunisia is going to go through is, means that they had a really weak group. I mean, the other people, the other – Teams in my group are the DR Congo, Guinea, and Libya. So, <laughs> luck at the draw. <laughs> yeah. And then in Group D, there is Senegal, who is, I think, they have a game in hand, first of they're all. Two, they're two points they're, player. Yeah. They're, over, the, uh, over Burkina Faso. What yeah, a, so they have a game in good hand. Good for them. And, and the Cape Verde Islands. And they're winning the group by two points. It seems difficult. They'd have yeah. to lose or – They'd have to draw one of their remaining two yeah. games and lose the other one. And, oh, both games are against South Africa, who are last in that group. So. So they, the other teams don't have uh, – Burkina Faso and Cape, uh, Cape Verde, they're playing each other. So the opportunity is there for a draw probably. Yeah. And if they draw, that's over. Yeah. So probably Senegal going through and probably, uh, probably Tunisia, Tunisia going through. Uh, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Ivory Coast gets it done. Really? And they, they they flip they flip the okay. script. Well, I will uh, I will go with Morocco then just to make this just a to make bet. controversy. Yeah, um, but I, I do believe that is that is a coin toss. I think it also depends on who they're. I don't know yeah. the matchup either. If it's against each other, that's really interesting. Um, but I want to uh, shout out to Gabon for still being within three points or uh, well within four points in that group, like the fighting Obama Yangs basically. Yeah, like. Also, credit a uh, personal credit to Aubameyang for staying playing with Gabon instead of doing the you know get a citizenship in Germany and sw jumping over because he's yeah. played in, at Dortmund for so long. Yeah, that's that's always fun to see is is players do things like that. Yeah, so. actually play for their national team yeah. instead of like half of the American players who are German. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, moving on to our usual finale, the quick fire round. Or penalty shootout thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, World Cup season is here, so we're gonna we're gonna do a little World Cup exclusive, uh, quick fire. Devin, World Cup kits, mostly just Adidas and one Puma, uh, yeah, have been so released far. So, so far, far for uh, the 2018 we want World some Cup. Some leaked, some leaked. Some some leaked, but we're gonna stay away for the from those for now. What what's your uh, what's your favorite? 
I, you know, Tom, we, we had a discussion about this. I really like the Germany kits. However, there was there was just one release picture, one like stock photo that was just so stock amazing. Stock photo. It was. I mean, it's, it's the Japanese like the Japanese kits. When you have a samurai in in your picture, there it is, in all its glory. And shout know, out to Shinji Kagawa, yeah, by the way. I mean that. I just think that's a great job of marketing. That, that is that is probably the best release picture, definitely. Yeah. No, that was really interesting. And, I mean, it looks really cool, too. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it almost looks like armor in a yeah. sense. And I think that's what they were going for. Yeah, that's what they were going for. I assume that's what they were going for. But it, it definitely was really interesting. And, uh, I mean, but like I said, other than that, Germany was second for me. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with a, another shout-out to Oscar, the Colombian kits. Oh, yeah. I think they're very nice, modeled here by uh, nice James Rodriguez. Uh, I think they're really Glorious classic. Picture. Yeah, a lot of the Adidas ones. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't see the Germany. Like we didn't have the Germany and Spain ones up either. Yeah. But they, a lot of them have been retro yeah. designs, and I really like that. Although some, some I feel like the uh, specifically Spain, the uh, execution was not quite great. Yeah, it's, but I thought that, I still I, I love fun. the I love the retro feel. Even the Mexico kits, they're a little yeah. bit retro with the the like old really big three stripes on the side. Um, so I, it's nice to see kind of like paying homage to the old mm -hmm. World Cups. And, and they're all from different, like, generations, too, which I really like. Uh, even the Russia home kit, that's from, like, when they were the USSR. It's modeled after that. Uh, now, this year's, or technically next year's, uh, World Cup ball was uh, officially revealed today, actually. Uh, the Telstar 18, uh, named after, there it is, named after really want an one, old, <laughs> named after one of the older World Cup balls. Um it looks, I mean, it looks good. doesn't look to appear to have any problems, unlike my favorite World Cup ball. But I'll get about a second. What, what's your favorite World Cup ball? I mean, honestly, when we pulled up all the World Cup balls, the only one I've ever actually gotten to play with and try out <laughs> was the 2014 one. The Brazuca. The Brazuca. Like, you know, so that, Great name. that is my favorite simply because it's hard to pick a favorite ball. That you haven't used. That you haven't used. Half the fun of using a ball is kicking the ball. Not looking yeah. at it. Like it's, not, it's not like a kit. Like a ball is very yeah. performance-based. Right. Uh, and speaking of performance-based, I'm going with the one that probably has the worst review performance-based, but I really like the look of it, and I also like the fact that like that World it's Cup was yeah that World Cup is really insane because that ball went all over the place. So I'm going with the 2010 uh, Jubilani. Uh, look at that thing in all its glory. You can't. I've looked because I've tried to buy one. You can you can barely find these things online because people hated them that much. They didn't but didn't make I, any more when yeah, they were done. That's and I cool. and I've seen several images of people like stabbing them and popping them because they hated them that much. So you can buy one for like five hundred dollars now, but uh, I don't want it that bad. Oh yeah, so it's like it's like a it's like a textbook, really. <laughs> and just don't buy a textbook from your classes and you're fine. Um, all right, Devin, All right. God so damn. the part, well, yeah, I mean, it's true. It's, no, it's, it's not wrong. It's yeah, true. No. It's accurate. It's painful and accurate. It's painful and accurate, um, yeah. There you I'm go. really proud of this, that we get to do this now, is the underappreciated players that we decided yeah, to do for, last uh, time. For context, we, we started this last time, but again, the video didn't go up. Well, it went up and then just didn't work, so I had to private the video. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we're doing a new quote series, if you will. Uh, every week we're going to try to... Pull up an under uh, underappreciated player. Shine some light uh, on yeah. the hard work. So last last week I briefly brought up Daily Blind, and, and I went with Jordan Henderson. Yeah, uh, we're not, we're not going to repeat those again. Uh, so who's your underappreciated player that is going to the World Cup? Oh, they have to be going as of right yes. now. Yes, they have to be going right now. Yes. Are you sure about that? If they're from Croatia, I'll allow it. They're from Sweden. They're from Sweden. Okay, that's it's close it enough. Gonna, they're in qualifying. Gonna, was, All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it good enough. It was going to be Forsberg, simply. Because, Forsberg, yeah, okay, that's because fair. Because he's kind of, you know, he was on the last team. You know, he was there, yeah. but he's still young. He's still growing. He had a really great season at Leipzig. Good player, creative player, can use both of his feet. I mean, he's just, yeah. he's not like, um, he's not that game breaker, world mm -hmm. class. Like some one of his abilities is just insane that make him so yeah. special. He's he, a he's very good all around player. Yeah. Yes. And um that's kind of what we're going for. Yeah, so he, he's this. he's got a uh he, he's very much appreciated at Leipzig, but yeah. as far as the national team he feels yeah. kind of underappreciated. Yeah. Uh, which is why I went Yeah, yeah. My my player is probably like a little more appreciated, but as far as he, he's not he's not like raved about all the time. Yeah. I'm going with Goretzka. 
from oh, Germany yeah. okay, that because sense. that yeah. man like just absolutely is held down that German midfield in a time of like transition. Yeah. And the fact that he came in as one of those transition pieces, as we see a younger uh, German team coming through with Timo Werner, and I mean Timo Werner is actually not that young, but like he's it's like Jamie Vardy, he's for bumped 20 in. Years. Yeah, well, not quite. But it's like the you but know he's only yeah. twenty seven. Or he's actually uh, only like 24. But, but yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying, he's not like th- there's the teenagers that are coming yeah, into some teams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but so you see the, the younger generation coming in here for Germany, and Goretzka came right into that midfield, immediately like took control. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's, re- he's like Forsberg, uh, a little more defensive, but yeah. he's so good at everything. He's yeah. so all around. He fits right into that German team. The, the, yeah. yeah like most German players, he's very technically gifted, very good passing the ball, moving it. He can hit a shot yeah. if he wants to, but he's he's very he would fit really well into the twenty fourteen World Cup team where they just absolutely decimated teams with passing and just yeah. all, most of their goals were, you know, little tidy finishes from inside the box because they didn't need anything else. Yeah. They could put the ball right where they wanted it to. Yeah. So the fact that I feel like he will be huge for their World Cup success as the this younger team starts to go around him mm-hmm. and the older players, the the Mures, the I mean Hummel's still pretty young, but the Mures, you know, the, those those type players, the Sherlas, they start to kind of weed out of the the German national team. All right, but yes, underappreciated players. players. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I I love to give love. Love, <laughs> love to, to give, give love. Love to give. Love. I love to give love. Devin Reader. I think we're gonna end on that now. Yeah. That's a perfect sense to end on. So uh, thank thank you as always, Devin. Yep. Um, Pleasure. Hopefully we'll be joined again. Probably not. It's probably close. not. Probably it's never. Close to Thanksgiving. Yeah. We'll probably have dinner again. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's, by the way, Tommy is missing us for a dinner of some sort. So how nice. Uh, I haven't eaten much today, so screw off. <laughs> but anyways, um, that's all for now. See you guys next time.